Greetings and salutations, my geeky and psychedelic patrons. Welcome once again to the North Country's most far out there podcast, We Got Got Nothing Nothing Blue, Blue. created by Life on Saturn Productions. I am your host, Catalyst Jost. I'm here today with a very unique guest. He is well adept with music. He bears a striking resemblance to the God of Thunder, as well as Jeff Bridges in one of my more favorite movie roles. Please help me welcome the one and only Thor himself, Franz Pope. How are we doing today, DJ? We doing pretty good, dude. How have you been? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. You know, uh, I finally got a stable good paying job. Uh, I've got a new place to moving into that I absolutely fell in love with and am ecstatic that, you know, we got this place and we'll get into that a little bit more later, I'm sure. Um, for the most part, life's been pretty good. Yeah, 2021 sounds like it's working well for you. Well, so far. It's, it's still young, though. <laughs> it's still young, though. I'm not though. reserving all... I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket yet. Yeah, yeah, like, um... Yeah, you see the news. Like, uh... We were doing good for, like, six days, and, uh... Now it's apparent we, uh... Need and to it's do gone. some patchwork. Yeah, <laughs> and it's gone! <laughs> uh, I'll say I had a good start to the year, you know? Um, sun was, uh, shining when I first walked out that day, and I actually took a look at my bank account. Sure enough, uh, my own stimulus check was, uh, planted in my account. Right on. I still have not checked if I've gotten my stimulus yet. I'd have to assume that it's there at this point. A lot of people, um, uh, like, haven't gotten theirs yet. True. I mean, but, like, you know, I remember two members of my family, like, already have gotten theirs, like, that I know of. Uh, it's probably been more, but it's just mainly for the fact that, you know, uh, I don't go to the bank that often, you know, unless I really need to withdraw the money because I'd much prefer having cash over card because my identity's been stolen fucking six times now. Really? Oh my God. It's ridiculous. Like, I don't know how it happens, but someone always gets my card info and I always have my fucking card on me. And this last time I only had an ATM card, meaning I can only use that in ATM, right? That's in the name ATM card. Well, I got a statement from my bank saying they had to put a hold on the card uh, because of suspicious activity. I'm like, oh, great, fucking again. And I call them, and they tell me that there was a charge to my ATM card from a website that was just a bunch of random amalgamation of numbers and letters, not even a real word, for $12.99. I had maybe five cents in my bank account at this point, so, like, no real loss there, and they flagged it so it was all good but like this is the sixth time since i graduated high school yeah someone's obsessed with you if that be the case like yeah, freaking fucking... or what kind of fucking bank like uh, does that six times like fucking that's my thing man like and like i've had people who go to the same bank as i do and they're like oh we've never had problems with that i'm like well apparently the world's just fucking against me man i have no idea what's up but you know all in all Aside from that, like, I now have money, and I don't have a card that can't be stolen. So, that's that's really, I now have got money in there this time. <laughs> you can always join the uh, chain wallet gang here. <laughs> oh, I was a chain wallet gang when I, was in eight years, when I was eight years old. And I remember my dad, he looks at me with the chain coming out of my pocket, and he unclips it from my belt loop, takes out my wallet, and just rips the chain off, breaking the leather. And I'm like, well, what the fuck was that for? And, you know. He wasn't as always, you know, mature, you know, quote, okay. quote. And uh, he didn't really give an explanation, just kind of like, you know, a shout, tell me to fuck off kind of deal. Uh, <laughs> Great parenting. Oh, yeah. I turned out <laughs> fine. It's okay. Uh, but um, on other lighter notes, uh, 2021 hasn't been too bad, actually, uh, in more of the geek route, uh, I noticed on HBO Max there, they got a whole new lineup of uh, different cartoons. Um, they got uh, they got some Cartoon Network's old stuff like, like, Courage. Uh, like Courage the Cowardly Dog. I've been obsessed with that show for a bit. Fucking, what is it? Ed, Ed and Eddie, Codename Kids Next Door, Billy and Mandy. It's crazy. Right, fuck it. Do you think they're going to include the crossover episodes? I think they already have, yeah, like because those are considered season episodes. Right, they weren't special; they're they're canon. Yeah, I believe so. Well, that's 
fucking awesome. It's a good thing I got HBO Max. Right, right. Yeah, you can go ahead and binge. Speaking of which, like, uh, that also made me go down memory lane in, like, uh, all the iconic voices from our childhood that's actually, like, low-key have always been there the entire time and you never knew about it. Like, uh, one of my favorite ones, like, um, was, who was it? Uh, Clancy Brown there, uh, you know? Uh, for those who don't know, Clancy Brown has pretty much been in Everything. one form of your lo- of your life or another in terms of television. Uh, lo- noted accomplishments uh, include being Lex Luthor for uh, freaking the original Superman animated series in mm-hmm. the '90s, and of course, my, one of my personal favorites, Mr. Krabs from SpongeBob. And for those of you who aren't too much into the TV watching option, as far as video games go. You might have heard about this little number, Detroit Become Human. It scares me to death because I have a real-world fear of artificial intelligence. But we're not going to get into that. But he voiced uh, Hank in that in that video game, the, the, your superior detective for one of your three main characters. And he, phenomenal job. And they modeled him after how he looks in real life, too, which is really interesting. Yeah, dude's also a great live-action actor, not just voice. Like, um, he's been in stuff like uh, the Shawshank Redemption. He's been he was in, in Shawshank? Yeah, he was the dickhead prison guard. No shit! Yep, he uh, also played a prison guard in uh, The Hurricane with uh, Denzel Washington. He's also made several appearances for... Netflix is the Punisher, um, and also uh, he did have one cameo in Lost too. Okay, most of what you said just blew my mind, especially with the Punisher because I like I viewed Punisher. I watched it like religiously. Like that, in my opinion, was the best of the Marvel shows that was put out before they all got canceled on Netflix. Um, yeah, on Netflix. Yeah, like by far the best, and you know. Daredevil being a close second, you know, and it's hard to even say that because that's when we first see the Punisher is in Daredevil. Yeah, yeah. Who? What's his name? John Berthenal? Or John Berthenal, yeah. Berthenal. Like, he uh, he just plays Frank Castle in a very special light. Like, what? because remember, from our childhoods, like, Thomas, we, Jane. Thomas Jane was Punisher, and he himself even said, like, uh, to Berthenal, like, yo, dude, you got my blessing in you got what it takes to make this role your own. Oh my god! Yeah. I, I even think uh, what is it? Uh, Disney and Marvel like they um, they actually want to go more with Burnthal as Punisher oh, in the future. Thank God, that's the reports saying. But like anything can change in a year. Well, yeah. I mean, this is true. And at the same time, like it's no longer a Netflix show. They're going it being Marvel and Disney. They're going to take creative differences to a whole new level. Um, and. While I do believe it will be good, I don't believe it'll be anywhere near as gritty as we hope. Well, here, that's another thing, too. Like, what, I wonder about, like, do you know anything about the licenses now that, like, because those shows are owned by Netflix, but Marvel is owned by Disney. Like, where does, like, those semantics work in? I'd have to imagine that the John Bernthal had a contract under Netflix to play as Punisher. Um... Well, I, what I'm thinking is probably going to happen is that since it was different licensors, since Netflix owned the show itself, Marvel and Disney, by extension, still owns the character of Punisher. So if they choose to recast John Bernthal as the Punisher again, it's he's still going to be Frank Castle, but it's not going to be the same show. Like, right. it's... Because, you know... As, as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? As really, you know, Netflix has been very agreeable upon, you know, what creative control they can have. Mm. They still aren't going to just say, here, have our show. Netflix originals have never been that way. No, it's the same thing. Like, they could probably still have Burnthal in the role, but like uh, maybe a different comic book storyline. Absolutely. uh, Because like, that's kind of what they did with... Spider-Man there, so... Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm kind of thinking, like, if they choose to do... Uh, have John play the Punisher again, what I'm kind of thinking is that... You remember watching the original 90s animated Spider-Man. Word. Part of me thinks, but then again, this was the 90s. None of those, Sam, sure, most to none of those people are still working in this project or that field for Marvel. I would imagine that they're going to model 
John's version of the Punisher after the 90s Spider-Man version where he came in for the one episode. I don't know if you ever saw that one. Yeah, I, I could actually see that. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was ex- I was obsessed with that uh, cartoon when I was younger. Um, here's the thing, though. Like, we're not going to know more until the Marvel TV shows start coming out. And then you got to keep in mind the next big movie that's going to tie – make have everything make more sense is probably going to be uh, multiverse of madness. No. Oh. So like that will definitely, if not take us down the rabbit hole, make us give us a clear direction on where it's going to end up. You know, can I be honest with you? I'm very nervous as to how multiverse of horror is going to turn out. Um, because the original director said it was going to be Marvel's first R rated horror movie, in which all of us pretty much creamed our jeans at. Like, panty pudding. Like, it's just... <laughs> hashtag Tom's a girl. Um, <laughs> like, it, it really... Like, I just... I'm very, very nervous because the original director, i pretty sure... Wasn't it James Gunn? I forget. Um, They're still going with Sam Raimi as the director, right? Yeah, Sam Raimi. He... He's the now he's the current director, but he was not the original director for that movie. Okay. And now do not get me wrong, do not mess with my words. I love Sam Raimi's work. Is it also cheesy as fuck? Absolutely. Like th- th- there are this is what I'm very nervous about because I've never seen a horror movie of Sam Raimi's that has like gone ex- exponentially well in the box office has been remembered as a cult classic. Uh, one of uh, my favorites, like uh, one of his more recent ones that like uh, I thought was flawless was uh, his, I guess you could say remake reimagining, but in some ways it can also act as a sequel. Like uh, the 2000, I believe 11 or 12 evil dead. Uh, that one in my mind, like the dialogue wasn't real cheesy at all. And, but also what really sold that movie were the particular gore effects, you know? Sure. I mean, it's not even the dialogue, I would say, the cheesy itself. I mean, like, Sam Raimi, and it's very well documented, has a pension for just random screaming women throughout the shots of his movie. Where they don't fit, there's just, like, they are randomized shots. You see it throughout all three of the Spider-Man films. Um, The effects, for the most part, aside from... I mean, gore effects are very hard to really cheese up unless you're, like, really going for, like, I'm intending to make this super cheesy. Well, also look at how uh, different directors uh, from our childhood have, you know, become more than we thought they were. Like, look at uh, James Wan, you know? Uh, His first foray was Saw, and then uh, he started doing stuff like Aquaman and Fast and Furious 6 and 7. And, like, I would... And Raimi's been in the game since the 80s, I think, uh, earlier than that. Late so, 80s, I would think, somewhere around that. Well, uh, Evil Dead was 81, but besides the point, like, he... You gotta imagine at that state of the game, like, after being in it for almost, like, 40 years, like, uh, y- you'd think maybe, like, he'll... Uh, wishful thinking he'll graduate, you know? Sure. Like, uh, that his... Like, especially if, if Disney's really giving him, like... The creative control. Exactly. That's the biggest thing that'll come to it. Like, how much studio interference will, like, fuck with the final product. Right. And I guess there's a thing. Disney and Marvel have been known to be very scrutinizing as far as the movies go, you know, in the making and production of these movies. And that's why they have all been such big hits at the box office, because it has been meticulous work to make sure everything that they are putting into this movie goes as smoothly as possible. Yeah, but you also got to believe that, um, what is it, especially especially buying up the rights for stuff like uh, Fantastic Four, X-Men, and <laughs> especially Deadpool in that lineup, you got to believe that they have to make some kind of bridge for more edgier and more adult-oriented content. Sure. And, it like, I don't know if necessarily, like, doc- the next Doctor Strange will be, like, exactly what we we're looking for but i think it will be a key uh what is it pillar in bridging mm-hmm. that gap well i mean i guess that you know there's another thing like as far as like how meticulous and scrutinizing marvel studios can be especially with its directors and how the movies are going new mutants do you remember the trailers for that movie coming out fucking in 2018 and it was set for august of 2019 or something like that that movie still has not come out it has been recasted redirected it's out it's out 
It's been out for a little bit. Like it was a direct to uh, like streaming kind of thing. Oh. Because like when it was supposed to like come out in 2020, it um, it well, well that I mean, that says it all. That's on the its thing. Own. Like when I saw the commercial in theaters the first time, like it had said in 2019 was when it was supposed to drop, and then it didn't happen. I don't count necessarily the New Mutants uh, in that lineup because a. That thing had been in develop. That movie had been in develop for like uh, years now. And freaking what was it? Once, um, once the Fox and uh, Disney merger was uh, being confirmed or like uh, was released finalized. publicly, yeah, finalized. Then the whole development of the movie, like, still, like, it, it just shattered. You know. Mm. So like, I, I don't count count that just due to things that were out of people's control. You know? Sure, but the same thing could be said in argument for the Gambit movie. That thing has been, it has been planned out, you know, so many different times, been recasted, redirected, re-fucking everything. For the, like the last eight to ten years, we've been hoping for a Gambit movie. They keep saying that there's going to be a Gambit movie, but it just doesn't happen. Like, I think they announced a the Gambit movie right around the time Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern was, you know... Crashing and burning spectacularly. Uh, <laughs> but I guess that's the thing. Like, you know, it, it really, it depends on who is in charge of these projects and how committed they are to accurately portraying whoever they're trying to portray. Right. Um, and, you know, a lot of people still, they want Channing Tatum to play Gambit. But at this point, he's aged out of the role. So it's being in developmental hell like this movie has been. It, with the perfect cha- casting like Channing Tatum was for it it's going to be hard to find uh, someone who can better suit that role. That's why we still don't have a fucking Wolverine because Hugh Jackman was the best and pretty much the only one. Oh, no, know. I think Carl Urban can uh, usurp uh, that role. You know, that is a good point. I love Carl Urban's work. He is a fucking phenomenal actor. I'd be very interested to see his take on Wolverine, but given his pension for overly violent roles whereas we've seen Hugh Jackman can definitely be violent but it's it's it was a necessary violence for Hugh Jackman's Wolverine like he was a very reserved like he should, well, reserved in terms of actually getting to the fight sure he was a loud mouth and a badass and a real dickhead let's be honest about that he reserved his fighting for when it was only necessary whereas Carl Urban's previous roles wasn't so much a case he was the kick ass ask questions later well also uh, keep this in mind because um because this is going to be the MCU's take on it, then you got to believe that they're going to want to mold it into a a different image. So they they very well could go with uh, the kind that goes like kick in the door, uh, shoot first, ask questions later. And that might not even be a bad thing. You know, it it just depends on where they go with the character, if anything at all. If, if I were like in my, in my, my, my dream imagination of what I would like Carl Urban to see as a Wolverine, would be the storyline where Logan further mutates, you know, past his just adamantium bones and fucking claws and self healing, where he he ends up becoming more of a quadruped. Like he's like his back is more hunched, he's grown much more for he resembles a Wolverine more than he did as just a man. Right, right. Um what they could also do is um because this is uh this would be new ground to the MCU. They could go with uh, how he originally was ended up, like him and Kitty Pride uh, kind of had their own dynamic duo thing going on there. Right. But Wait. the same merit, like, we've already seen an origin story for Wolverine. In fact, but we awesome. haven't seen an MCU origin story for Wolverine. All I ask is that they keep the bone claws. Because that, to me, like, you know, I grew up before I was very invested in the world of nerd. You know, Wolverine was one of those, like, eh, it's whatever. I remember actually being scared to watch uh, X2 as a kid. Really? Like, I couldn't watch it without someone else being there to reassure me that, hey, it's not real, it's okay. (laughs) Because I was a dumb six-year-old. And, uh, I mean, I guess that's kind of like, you know, when I grew up that way, like, it didn't, it didn't really suit an interest for me because I'm like, oh, he's got metal claws, fucking whatever. But when I saw X-Men 3, you know, Origins... And they introduced the bone claws in his first bout at the mutation. I was probably around the same age as that actor was, you know, playing Logan as a kid. Right. And I just remember going, holy fucking shit. This is awesome. 
And I don't know, it was just a very, very big deal for me seeing those bone claws. And I'm like, you see, to me, they're just more cool that way. Right. Like, you know, like that is 100% all him. It's not adamantium. It's not anyone who was fucked with his biochemistry. Like, it is, it, that is Wolverine in the purest form. Are there any, like, MCU shows that you're most looking forward to? Um, Moon Knight, I'm very excited to watch. WandaVision, obviously. But uh, did they ha- cast anyone for Moon Knight yet? Yeah, I thought it was uh, Oscar Isaac. Oh, word. Yeah. No, way. Um, that might have been rumor. No, I'm pretty sure it was confirmed it was Oscar Isaac, and he's going to have the white costume for Moon Knight. <laughs> Really? Yeah. If that is true, that would be dope sauce. I, I know um, with She-Hulk, they got Tatiana Maslany as um, as Jennifer Walters there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Fucking, like, uh, she can pull off the acting chops for it, definitely. Mm-hmm. And uh, they have confirmed that Mark Ruff will reprise Bruce Banner for the show itself. Right, fucking on. So my, uh, we were talking about this a couple weeks ago. Um, when, you know, fan casting, that's, that's been a thing forever. Uh, Stephanie Beatrice from Brooklyn Line 9 was high up on that fan casting list as She-Hulk. And, you know, she she had come out and said that she can't do the role, which disappointed a lot of people because she is a badass who I think could have fit that dynamic perfectly. She, I could see it. I, I could, but um, I don't know much about her uh, filmography to give a full judgment. And uh, Tatiana there, she made her name just by one show. And... It's like, right. I don't know. I mean, but that's a fair point. I was talking to one of my uncles um, earlier this week about uh, WandaVision too. there. Um, Freaking. So I-, I noticed in the trailers there were no, uh, there was no discernible villains per se. So my guess is that like uh, Wanda is actually supposed to be the villain there because oh. I think that, I think this is meant to take place after Endgame. So like, and after the whole thing with Vision, that like, that will absolutely break her psyche. And oh, if absolutely. that breaks her fucking psyche, like, uh, well, it fucking so sucks if, for the rest so of us. What if like all of what we're seeing is in her head? Is the kind of deal like or Joker esque in that? Or way? even just some manifestation of reality? Because uh, didn't she get like in the MCU? Didn't she get her powers from the Reality Stone or something like that? Um, as far as I know, I'm not sure, but her powers are. That, like, they react harmoniously to the Infinity Stones. Uh, what I do know is, like, as far as the canon goes for... As far as the Fox goes, they never really introduced her her and Quicksilver's origins in the MCU. Like, her and Quicksilver were Magneto's kids. Mm-hmm. So they were just mutants, you know, in the original uh, Fox uh, X-Men series. Which they could absolutely tie into now that... Um... Disney owns the Mm X-Men. But now it's uh, really, I think it just had to do with the part of the part of Sokovia that Quicksilver and uh, Scarlet Witch lived in. Right. Right. Wasn't there something having to do with some sort of radiation around that? Oh no, I got to read vibranium or something. I got to rewatch. um, I got to rewatch. I remember it was a tad convoluted and not clear. Yep. Um, what was it? Yeah, so we discussed, like, Wanda's probably going to be the villain, and honestly, if you think about it, it would, that show in particular would probably tie into uh, Multiverse of Madness better. Oh, absolutely. I, I feel like they the two have to be connected. In because some Wanda sort of way. Wanda is the main, like, the lead opposite Benedict Cumberbatch in that show. So I, I feel like with the, the focus that they are shifting onto Scarlet Witch that those two have to be interconnected in some way. In some sort of way, you know? And because, you know, Vision was powered by the Mind Stone, maybe that'll play some sort of factor there. Right. And, you know, like, as you said, like, Wanda could be the villain for WandaVision, which I think is a very interesting take. I would love to see how that plays out. Um, It's also well worth noting that, you know, through the commercial or previews for WandaVision, we see her and Vision constantly... jumping realities Mm -hmm. so what if that was just a setup you know all the settings but we know nothing else about what villains we're gonna see well we're not Um, exactly clear what happens to the infinity stones after endgame right no maybe maybe tony fucking you know 
they wish to save everyone and also destroy the stones like Thanos did. That also was very unclear. They might think about... Uh, no, that's not true. No, they brought the stones back to their, their timelines, their correct timelines, because they got them from the past, because Thanos destroyed their current stones. Okay, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, on that note, time to, once again, go strange as fuck oh. here on We Got Nothing Blue. Beautiful. So I was um I was fe feeling very paranormal uh, the other day so I started going uh into research about possible like local ghost legends. Mm. Uh here's uh one place I came up on. This came as number 3 in uh most haunted places in, like, the North Country. Um, well, this particular ghost sighting. So, the article reads, At number three, Pine Grove Cemetery, which is located uh, around uh, Messina there. Mm -hmm. um, Dragon Albrentinov is the man with both the name and the life history to end up as a ghost. That's the most badass name I've ever heard. Right. He was a Bulgarian immigrant who owned two restaurants in the New York town of Messina. He was shot and killed in 1949 when a hunter mistook him for a deer. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dragon was buried in the local Pine Grove Cemetery, and his grave has become the focal point for local ghost hunters. One couple walking their, dr their dog through the cemetery were discussing the grave when they heard someone behind them hiss turn around they didn't turn around and instead fled from the cemetery as quickly as they could well that, that was a smart choice other reports include the usual electronic interference including of the scanners and police cars passing by yet one of the more unusual claims is that the cemetery is home to shadow people local police officers and a local ghost hunting group both claim to have seen dark figures flittering flittering yes Around the graveyard in the early hours of the morning, local paranormal organization the Shadow Chasers claim the creatures feed on the energy of the local street lamps. Hmm. Okay, that's all. So cool. Um, yeah, this co this is published in uh, listverse.com, and it was written by a uh, by Jeff J F Freighter in Creepy. Yeah, that's in creepy. That's literally what it says. Published by J. Jeff Freight. I'm not gonna even pretend to know the what name, that's talking about. The initials, about. the name. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. No, but um, yeah, I, I actually uh, went digging more about a uh, uh, pine grove there. Um, what was it? It's actually featured in the top five haunted places in the Adirondack region as no a shit. whole. Yes, uh, this um. This one in particular says, uh, and this comes from visitadirondacks.com, this final resting place is actually the second location of Pine Grove City, or cemetery. <laughs> in Don't they know not to fucking move burial sites? How many movies have we made? Whether it be an Indian burial site or a cemetery plot, you don't fucking move the headstones. Capitalism, bro. Ghost cell. Haunting cell. And you know this. Sure. The final resting place is actually the second location of Pine Grove Cemetery. In the mid-1950s, graves from 19 cemeteries on Barnhart Island were moved to accommodate the St. Lawrence Power Project and the Seaway. It is thought that many of the old caskets and remains were not handled with the greatest of care, and that they were buried in a heap in a mass grave at the new cemetery. Do you want mass hauntings? Because that's how you get mass hauntings. Like, Stories about hauntings and strange happenings surround the cemetery. But our favorite is that snowmobilers have shared accounts of seeing children running and playing in the graveyard in winter. Visitors are welcomed at Pine Grove from dawn until dusk. That's interesting, too, because uh, what was it? Um, uh, that story about uh, that Bulgarian <laughs> dude was that he got shot and killed in 1949. Now, can you imagine that? You get killed 
for being mistaked for a deer. And then, like, literally a year later, a bunch of dudes decide, hey, uh, you don't mind if we uh, move your um, move your corporeal your remains. remains. Uh, we're uh, we're going to take real good care of them and then just toss them into a dump in a new like, location. Like, fucking haphazardly just one, like, two, oh, yeah. Like, clearly the universe had it out for this Bulgarian dude. Like, uh, they did right. not give two fucks about right. him. Pretty much the universe is like, we're going to give you a badass name, you're going to own two restaurants, and then someone's going to think you're a fucking deer. That also, like, makes me wonder, like, God, do, like, when you die, like, when you become a manifest of energy, like, are you, do you even have conscience in a certain sense? Like... Freaking, uh, you're at the funeral, everyone's crying over you, and then, uh, like, maybe the cemetery people, the ghosts there, they have their own gated community where they have their spiritual houses, uh, white picket fence, but it's glowing mm. phosphorus because it's haunted, and, uh, they enjoy their tea, and then one, a couple years later, uh, like, it all gets demolished by a corporeal bulldozer, it's like... Mm. Their, their their link has been severed. You gotta believe that afterlife fucking sucks. <laughs> right. I mean, like, what I kind of imagine is like you you hear all those stories that like, oh, ghosts are only here because they have unfinished business on the earth. I don't necessarily think that's correct. To me, I think, you know, fucking heaven, hell, fucking, uh, what's the other, purgatory. Anything that is a spectral plane, so to speak. I think that it exists simultaneously with the dimension, the platform we are on. Whereas, you know, people will think about it like Earth is the middle ground, heaven is below, and hell is on top. Well, the way I kind of look at it is like, if you've seen, you've seen those fucking pie graphs or any sort of graph where like you flip over the laminate and it shows the same graph but with different markings and such. You know what I mean? Right. What if the Earth is that kind of graph? So we are on the first dimension, which would be Earth, us living. Second dimension could be heaven or hell. I think it all exists on the same plane, but parallelly. Does that make sense? Um, it, here's what I think. Uh, a ghost is actually a dead person's Snapchat, but like soul-wise. <laughs> I mean, think about it. It is a, a memory that uh, withstands the test of time from a single location. And, you know, uh, what is it? Hashtag scare the fuck out of these kids. I know, I know. And, like, uh, you, like, what is it? If they're knocking shit over, it's like a snap video. Like, that's the soul's version of a snap video. That's fucking hilarious. You know, it's funny. Like, I've, I've grown up, you know, with a strong belief in, in, you know, spiritual energies and the afterlife and ghosts and all of that. And I grew up in haunted houses. Like, I can't remember, you know. Like, I lived in a lot of houses my whole life. I can only remember, say, about four of them, uh, you know, in my adult life. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or when I was able to develop a memory. As far as when I lived in Peru, I don't remember any sort of hauntings. But uh, when I had moved to Cumberland Head, the first two months of my living there, it was it was just insane. Like, you know, I had this, I had this room that had a bunch of windows, you know, behind my bed. And then to the left of my bed, there's one more window. And I also had a closet that, you know, it had like the rolling doors. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the first two months of my living there, every night, and we had moved in just at the time of school, so all the windows were sealed shut for, you know, the cold weather that was coming. First night, or the first two months, every night, the hangers in my uh, closet would swing violently, like just making an obscene amount of noise. Like it was scaring me. I, I, would, I slept on the couch a lot. Uh, and you know, the house is further haunted. You see doors pop open out of nowhere, windows slam shut out of nowhere. It, it was, it was, that was the haunting I grew up with. And then my last house the we know for a fact, the original owner, like it, the last house I lived in my parents' house is like a known haunted spot. I can't tell you how many times I've taken a cab there and it's hard to find them the GPS, but when they find it and they roll up, I swear to God, 75% of the cab drivers I've had in the last five years have went, oh, you live in the haunted house. And I'm like, yeah, how does everybody know that is my question. Uh, speaking on the uh, on the subject of haunted houses, you told me that uh, the apartment that you've recently acquired is in fact haunted and has a bit of a history. Well, in fact haunted, I think, is up for speculation. I, I, I think there's no doubt in my mind that it is haunted. So this 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 place we're living now, uh, it, it from the outside it looks like this rundown shitty little duplex, 
But inside, it's magnificent. It's got this fucking... It's Victorian style hand carved staircase. Like I could go in, I could talk all day about how beautiful that, this place. That's is. why you always go for personality, people, not looks. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, ladies. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but so this house was built in the 1770s. It, it, it pre, it might even predate America existing as America. Uh, it was used as an overnight for railroad travelers and workers, and it was also a brothel at one point in its history. Freaky, so, in more ways than one. <laughs> yeah, and as we were talking to the landlord when we were first viewing this place, um, you know, he was telling us all of this, and I'm like, oh, so it's definitely haunted. He's like, oh, well, a lot of people do who have lived here say they do hear really, really weird sounds, but it's just an old house settling. And I'm like, I refuse to believe that, and I'm okay with it being haunted. I'm the guy for this place. Uh, and, like, then again, even if it is haunted, all I do is buy some sage. It's literally ghost weed. It calms them right the fuck down. Ghost weed. I fucking have never heard it called that before. I love it. It, it's, I mean, it looks like a big old bundled blunt. Oh my god. And then god. you just wave it around for the ghost of like, here, get a contact high. <laughs> get like, contact high. Like, it, I don't know. Like, I, having grown up in a very spiritual kind of, like, not spiritual religious, but in a spiritual believing household, um, I've learned... You don't piss off the ghosts. You don't fuck with Ouija boards. And you just, I mean, like, in more more cases than not, as far as ghosts go, you were living in their old home. Mm. And they see you as an intruder that they may not fucking like. Um, I mean, like, fuck, take for example, you know, you get some 22-year-old stoner living in this old house. And the person who, like, owned this house, the original owner, was like cutthroat businessman didn't be, no nonsense bullshit and he just sees this kid token up every morning at 9 a.m before work he's got to get pissed it's like this little lazy fucking well, degenerate well that depends on well that depends on if the uh, the apparition itself is you know uh coherent uh has actual consciousness you know because uh, again going back with my theory about um y you know a, a ghost being a snapshot from a dead person's soul like it, chances are it, is that is that it depends on uh, what kind of vibrations uh, the living souls inhabiting it are, and that could absolutely activate, uh, well, the the spiritual Snapchat. Sure. So to speak. Well, I, you know, they say about ESP uh, being a sixth sense. Um, you know, I think that's a very real thing. I think people are more, you know, vibrationally and harmonically resonating something that can bounce off something like a spectral energy. Um, you know, like I said, I've grown up in haunted houses my whole life. I get to feel where, like, huh, there's something different about this place, and that's very much the same way with my with my new living situation. Like, I felt that something was there, and it excited me. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, fuck yes. Um, uh, I had friends who, uh, you know, they lived in an old, you know, generations own family house, and uh, <laughs> their dad just like, you know, it'd be seven in the morning. They're cooking, they're cooking cream of wheat or whatever have you. And just like some spice just falls off the uh, just falls off the rack or whatever. And my friend's parents, like you know, they did the history on that shit, and they, you know, reading up about the past family members who lived there, and they got the names and shit, and they knew what some of them were like in their previous life. And one of these ghosts was a prankster. So it'd be seven a.m. Spice racks knocks off, and he just look off. He's like, "Fucking knock it off, Frank. It's too early for this shit." <laughs> like some people are very nonchalant, <laughs> okay with living with ghosts, and that to me is awesome. I feel like I'd be that kind of spirit, the kind that would uh, pull those weird ass pranks. You do that in the living, so of course you're gonna be doing that. Uh, on no that note, uh, when it comes to spiritual apparitions in the North Country, when it comes to uh, the state of streaming, our own personal opinions and passions on the world of geek. Flat out, folks, we got nothing. As always, I would like to thank my guest for coming on here. Franz, you have been amazing, dude. Thank you so much for having me, DJ. I've had so much fun today. Uh, all right. And if you would like to follow Franz on Facebook, follow him, uh, Franz Philip Pope John. Franz Please. Philip John Pope. Philip and Jumbo. before we do, I would like to plug, I do a gaming streaming service with uh, my friend Brian 
and his handle is Aloof Plays, and that's on YouTube and Twitch and, and Instagram uh, and Instagram. Yep. Uh, so if you are of the persuasion that you like watching people fail horribly at video games in a comical sense, give us a follow. And if you would like to see more what uh, what Life on Saturn has, please follow us at Life on Saturn Productions on Instagram. Facebook, and of course YouTube. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please mention in the comments what you would like to see me talk more next on here. And if you'd like to see what I personally provide, please follow me at Catalyst Jost on Instagram. And with all that being said, please folks, keep, keep your vibes dope, dope keep, keep your zen flowing, flowing, and as always, always peace. Hey. I'm Saturn Lunar Nova. Be sure to follow Life on Saturn Productions on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook to see our short films and music videos. Peace. Peace.